If you have spent time in the Web3 space, you've probably heard the term DAO and maybe even heard of some of the crazy things that DAOs have done, such as purchasing expensive artwork, acquiring rare Wu-Tang Clan albums, buying the US Constitution, and even sending somebody to the moon. But what exactly is a DAO and what role do they play in the future of Web3? In this video, we're gonna answer that question as well as cover the history of DAOs, all the various types of DAOs out there, and a platform that is changing the game when it comes to DAO setup and operations. So make sure you watch until the end of the video for that. In its most basic form, a DAO, which stands for Decentralized Autonomous Organization, is a group of people working collaboratively towards a common mission using cryptocurrency as a coordination tool. And while DAOs may seem like a new and novel concept, Vitalik Buterin, the co-founder of Ethereum, actually referenced the idea of a DAO in the Ethereum white paper as well as Bitcoin Magazine all the way back in 2013. Yet despite the fact that the concept has been around for a while now, there are very few people that can actually describe what a DAO is and what exactly they do. This is because DAOs are incredibly flexible and can be used in a number of different ways. DAOs can be used to accomplish a multitude of things from governing a DeFi protocol like you're in finance, all the way to starting a social club such as Friends with Benefits. We're gonna cover all the different types of DAOs later in this video, but first it's important to understand how DAOs are constructed. In total, there are six Six elements which make up a DAO. First, and arguably the most important, is the mission. This is why DAOs exist in the first place, to accomplish a shared mission. Typically, a DAO's mission is either one of two things. It is either capital intensive, meaning the mission requires a hefty amount of capital in order to fulfill its goals, or the mission is labor intensive. Labor intensive DAOs are organizations that are unstoppable, permissionless, and have the potential to operate forever. DAOs can also be a combination of labor intensive and capital intensive. And speaking of capital, that is actually the second element of a DAO. Once the idea is established, people can invest capital into the DAO in exchange for coins or NFTs that represent ownership, which provides some governance rights to the DAO. In the case of a coin, the investment is usually fixed price, meaning that for every $1 that someone puts in, they receive a fixed amount in return let's say 1 million coins. The fixed price model also makes it easier to issue a refund if the DAO is unsuccessful. Just simply give everyone back the USD that they invested. The next element of a DAO is trading. Once a user has a DAO coin, they're able to trade it back for another cryptocurrency or coin using either a decentralized exchange like Uniswap or a centralized exchange such as Coinbase. This is also important because in the case where there is a fixed supply of a DAO coin, it allows new users to join the DAO if they are interested and have the capital in order to invest. Now, once a DAO has capital and the coin is tradable, the DAO needs an element of governance in order to operate. The fact that a DAO makes key managerial decisions by voting rather than solely by the discretion of a centralized entity is a key property that distinguishes a DAO from a traditional investment entity. And this also leads us to the fifth element, which is socialization. DAOs are social by nature. Once a member joins a DAO, they need to be able to see which other members are also in the DAO and to communicate with them about DAO related or other things. Today, most DAO communities actually live off chain on centralized platforms such as Discord and Twitter. As a layer one blockchain that is optimized for storing social content, DSO is built to support on-chain tools for DAO members to socialize with one another, and you can learn more about that topic right here in this video. And the sixth and final element is distributions. Once a DAO has allocated its funds, it can start to generate cash flow off of its assets. This can be used to reward token holders or to compensate people that are doing work to help advance the DAO. Now that we understand what DAOs are and the elements that help shape them, let's take a look at some real life examples. But first, make sure you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying this video and want to learn more about DAOs and decentralized social media. And of course, we have to start all the way back at the beginning with the very first DAO known as the DAO. The DAO launched in 2016 on Ethereum and intended to act as an investor-directed venture capital firm. The DAO raised $150 million worth of Ether and was the first killer application on Ethereum. But just three months after its launch, the DAO was hacked and $60 million worth of Ether was stolen. At the time of the hack, the DAO was such a heavily invested project that its contracts contained approximately 14% of all ether in circulation. After countless debates and heated arguments, the Ethereum community decided to hard fork the blockchain in order to reverse the hack and return the funds to investors. Some Ethereum users did not agree with the hard fork, however, and maintained the original Ethereum blockchain that is known today as Ethereum Classic. Now, it is important to note that DAOs have come a long way since then. Technology is much more advanced today, and as I mentioned in the intro of this video, new DAOs are sprouting up all over the place in order to accomplish 
all sorts of different shared missions. For example, some DAOs are created in order to purchase very expensive collectibles. You see, big ticket collectible items traditionally have been reserved for the top 1%. Picasso paintings, vintage Ferraris, and original Babe Ruth trading cards have only been available to the most wealthy investors. But that has all changed with collectible DAOs. Collectible DAOs allow for the fractionalization of big ticket collectible items. Some great examples are Flamingo DAO and Pleaser DAO, which has purchased some blue chip NFTs as well as other high profile items. Pleaser DAO actually purchased the unreleased one of one Wu-Tang Clan album for $4 million. You also have the Constitution DAO, which attempted to purchase one of just 11 original copies of the US Constitution that went up for auction on November 18th, 2021. In a matter of just seven days, the DAO was able to raise $40 million and onboard literally thousands of new users into Web3. Although they were not successful in winning the auction, Constitution DAO showed us the true potential of what DAOs have to offer. DeFi DAOs are the governing body of some of the largest DeFi protocols in all of crypto, such as Yearn Finance, Uniswap, and MakerDAO. You even have some DeFi protocols such as Shapeshift that started out as a pre-existing company and transitioned into a DAO after the founder Eric Voorhees released this Twitter thread. To my knowledge, Shapeshift is one of the only companies to transition from a traditional structure to a DAO and has set the framework for future Web3 companies to follow. There are also music DAOs which are attempting to reshape the music industry and empower artists to make a living doing what they love. There are DAOs such as Ukraine DAO, which was spun up after the Russian invasion of Ukraine and was used to help support those affected by the war. Ukraine DAO has donated over $7 million to those in need, proving that Web3 can truly make a positive difference in real world events. And then there are other types of DAOs which are attempting feats that may seem impossible, such as Moon DAO, which is literally trying to send people to space. This is a great Twitter thread breaking down Moon DAO, which I'll link down in the description below. The list really goes on and on, and we could easily make an entire video dedicated to all the different types of DAOs out there. Leave a comment down below if you'd want to see a video Video like that. But in the meantime, I suggest checking out the Year of the DAO newsletter from DAODAO in order to learn more about these various kinds of DAOs. There is a new edition of the newsletter every week exploring the newest developments and diving deep into the world of DAOs. I'll leave a link to the newsletter down in the description as well. Now, all of this information may have motivated you to join a DAO or even start a DAO yourself, but where exactly would you even get started? Unfortunately, the current biggest barrier to entry is actually starting up and operating a DAO. Current DAO tooling is fractured and complex. Complicated. The current DAO ecosystem has nearly $10 billion in total treasury value and 1.7 million governance token holders. DAOs are thriving, but in order for DAOs to operate effectively, there are countless tools that need to be utilized. Here is a look at the current DAO tooling landscape. Right now, you need upwards of 10 to 15 various tools or protocols in order to successfully operate a DAO. But luckily, there's a new platform on the block which offers all of these tools in one place which is DaoDao. DaoDao is the first platform that makes creating a DAO as easy as setting up a social media account, and that makes contributing to a DAO as easy as sending an email. By lowering the barrier to entry for creating a DAO, contributing to a DAO, and engaging socially with a DAO, DaoDao can take DAOs mainstream in the same way that Coinbase did for tokens and OpenSea did for NFTs. This is an incredibly exciting time for DAOs, and I highly suggest you head over to DaoDao.io and see for yourself just how easy it is to get involved with DAOs and even start one yourself.